Uh, good evening and welcome to this very special show. I mean, every month Sandrine and I get together and uh, we talk to someone who is at the top of the game, who knows what they're talking about, is an expert in their area. And it's my pleasure tonight to pass over to Sandrine to introduce our guest. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, Stephen. Hi, Guillaume. Uh, I'm very, very excited to have Guillaume tonight. Uh, Guillaume de Cugis. I hope I pronounce it right. Yes, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Who is French like me, so it's fantastic. Uh, and uh, Guillaume is the CEO and co-founder co of Scoop It, uh, which is a content curation platform. And Guillaume is a serial entrepreneur who has done a lot, a lot, a lot of work in 15 years. Um, so, yeah, I'm very, very excited to talk to you today. So first time we actually speak to each other that way. So that's right. exciting. Um, so you're in San Francisco right now, but Scoop It, the headquarters of Scoop It are in Toulouse, my hometown. So that's uh, doubly exciting exciting for me. <laughs> so um, for those who do not know Scoop It, who do not know you, could you give us an introduction? Yeah, so, um, and, you know, super excited to be here. Thanks for, for having me. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, and again, sorry for the technical glitches at the, at the beginning. So um, Scoop It is a, you know, is, is a, you know, our mission at Scoop It is to help professionals and, and businesses publish content. Um, the reason we got started was really, uh, you know, six years ago, we were thinking about how um, the Web 2.0 changed the way we could become visible online. And we felt, you know, the Internet had already changed a lot, but Web 2.0, you know, social networking, user generated content, all that meant that content was going to drive the game from now on. And so we, we started Scoop It because we felt a lot of professionals, a lot of small business owners, a lot of marketers are not going to be able to, you know, become media as fast as they should. And so we need to help them with that challenge. And so we started as a content curation platform. The idea of curation is that you don't necessarily have to author everything you publish. You can also curate what somebody else has written or created um, and, and, you know, add your own spin to it. You know, make a, a really careful selection of the best content on a given topic and, you know, add some context, add some, you know, uh, um, elaborate on that topic, add some insights. Uh, and this is really a powerful way to connect with an audience and to build an audience. And so we felt that's that's a great opportunity to solve the first challenge that people have with what we you know started to call content marketing back then, which is, you know, not having enough content, but still wanting to express yourself online, still wanting to build uh, an audience online. So that's, that's how we get started. Yep. So that's the. I think Stephen froze. That's, that's the key. Oh, as, I'm, back. I'm, I'm back again. That, that's the key, isn't it? If you if you're on the internet and you you're actually creating content, there 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 needs to be a stream of content besides your own. Yeah, you know, if you look at our homepage, what we like to say is we like to say you are the content you publish, and I think that's a that's a truth mm -hmm. which you know seems obvious now, but. It was totally not the case 10 years ago or even five years ago, uh, you know, and I'm not even talking about before the Internet. But, you know, with web, with the first version of the web, you know, you could be visible through, you know, uh, SEO, which involved a lot of technical and sophisticated things back then. And SEO completely changed. Now it's all about content. You know, SEO and content marketing are more and more the same thing. Uh, there, there still is a bit of, you know, technical things you need to do, of course. But 80 percent of the SEO, if you talk to SEO, uh, people as 80% of the value is coming from content. So, you know, you are the content you publish, like it or not. And if you publish nothing, it means you don't exist, you're not visible online. And if you publish, you know, not good content, people, you know, this will hurt your, your brand, whether it's your personal brand or whether it's your business brand. So, so this is, you know, the new game, the new context we all evolve in. And whether it's for, you know, our personal career development or personal professional brand, or whether it's for our business, we need to publish great content to become visible and to engage with our audience, potential employers, potential uh, customers or partners. Um, that's the new game we're in. Indeed. And content discovery is key, isn't it? I mean, this is one of the main elements of Scoop It. 
can you can you sort of describe how the search engine works? In, in yeah, absolutely. So, you know, our first, uh, you know, so so the problem we're trying to solve is you know help people publish content. And the first hurdle that we heard a lot from people was, yeah, well, so how are we going to be producing content? And so that's the idea of curation that I was just explained. Now, curation is actually not a time saver at all if you don't have tools to automate the discovery. You know, the big problem with curation, it could be, you know, curation can be very time consuming. Um, and, you know, there's been a lot of curators who didn't wait for Scoopit or other curation tools to become great curators. They just spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, if you talk to someone like Robin Good, right. you know, there's a lot of great examples of, of great curators. And they, they did curation 10 years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. They just spent a lot of time. And the bulk of the time that is spent is in discovering great content to share and curate. And so we uh, built a technology that automated this, not to replace curators, but actually to empower them. We don't want to. We don't believe in automated curation. We, you know, all of the attempts of trying to do automated curation, you know, failed in the end. The, um, you know, and and you know, right now Facebook is getting some fire from the Republicans in the U.S. because you know, maybe they're maybe or maybe not. They're playing with the filters, and you know. So there's the, the whole controversy in the yeah. U.S. on that. So automated filtering doesn't work. What we're doing with our technology is we're crawling the web on behalf of our users. So our users start creating what we call topics, which is they define a topic they want to show expertise and thought leadership on. They describe it with a few keywords. And our system is going to crawl more than 35 million web pages, and you know the number increases every day. Uh, and we, we crawl the web for you. So every day we crawl more than 35 million pages so that you don't have to. And we come out with content that matches those keywords. We rank that uh, you know, using dozens and dozens of uh, criteria. And we filter that. We give you some filters. So if you want to get fresh content from the last two weeks or the last 48 hours, you can. You can filter on the format. So if you want to get just videos, you, you can do that as well. So that's what we do. We, we automate that discovery through our, our technology. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now you've you've got to the stage where, uh, as a user, you're presented with the latest information from, as you said, from 35 million sites around the the, the web, and it's it's been pre-ranked for. For you, so you know the, yeah. the relevancy of knowing. What's sorry? My apologies. I'm freezing. What happens next? What can a user do with that? Yeah, so, um, so what happened next is up to you, but we make it easy. So, we had, we, so you know, of course, discovery is just one step. So, that's what we automate. The, the second thing we do is the platform has a number of publishing tools. So, if you want to share that to social media, and that's what I think the, you know, the, a lot of people think about curation for is I can discover content and I can share that to social media to engage my you know, Facebook followers, my, my Twitter followers. And that's great, you can do that. But what we realize is that when you do that, you miss out on the opportunity to actually build something bigger, which is create your own uh, media property on the internet. And, um, and the reason for that is that when you share the social media, you're actually driving people away from you uh, to this original content site. And you definitely wanna do that. You wanna send people back to the original website, but you miss an opportunity to tell them why you gave them that video to watch or that article to read in the first place. So you, you miss an opportunity to explain and add value. And so this is why we created um, you know, other ways to publish that. We have this concept of topic pages, which are really you know, a mini content site that you can build um, either on the Scoopit platform or you can even host that on your domain, integrate that with your website. Um, we also have you know, ways to publish directly to your WordPress or you know, HubSpot or Drupal website. So it can be pretty sophisticated. But the idea is that if you're just tweeting links, you're missing out. Curation is bigger than that. And curation also means that you can take that content and turn that into what we call a curated post. And so it's a way to blog without blogging. If, if, if you, you know, it's kind of a joke we had you know, with uh, a reporter about, you know, we've, we've invented blogging without blogging. Uh, and the idea is that blogging takes a lot of time, uh, you know, creating a, you know, I've been blogging for a long time now and it still create, it still takes me four or five hours to, to create a blog post. Um, and 
you know, but if I read something that's on my, that's on my topic of expertise, in just 10, 15, 20 minutes, I'll come up with two paragraphs that are going to be bringing my own opinion by, you know, or, or data points to complete uh, the story or some perspective. And it's going to take me 10, 15, 20 minutes, and I can turn that into a post, either on a stupid page uh, or, um, you know, our WordPress blog. Um, and so now it benefits my SEO. Now it brings, it, it builds my engagement on my property, on my website. And of course, I can share that further, but then I can use social networking to distribute that content as opposed to make it the place where, um, you know, I'm going to create all the engagement. So, so that's what happens next. Um, you know, you can make something of that content, either publish it directly to social or turn that into something that will be part of your own media property and then distribute it. Now, and I'm sure she has questions as well. I couldn't hear a thing. Right, so Sandrine, you've been uh, with Scoopit since the B twin 2010, and you have some questions that you. Want. Yeah, Sandrine, you've been you've been here forever. And oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah. So, uh, from from the private beta to to now, and you know. Yeah, I've been around the block. No, I've been following Scoopit for so many years. It's such a great platform. That's actually where I started curating, really, really curating. Uh, so at the end of 2010, so it's been a while. And, and I really like what you said about, you know, curation, which is also part of blogging. It's part of creation. You know, curation is very complementary. Uh, and I like what you said about, you know, curation, because a lot of people think that curation is just aggregation. They do not realize that it can be very time consuming, that good curation takes a lot of time. And you do not uh, you do not have to just curate one post. You can put several uh, curate several uh, sources within one blog post. So that that's a really good point to make, because a lot of people had this idea that curation is just, you know, a bunch of links that you put together and that you share with others. Um, so the thing I, I like the most about Scoop It, uh, aside from the fact that I got a lot of followers from Scoop It and got my big, big, uh, my, my big, big, um, um, I forgot the word, <laughs> but I got a lot of traction from Scoop It. Uh, I have to say that. Uh, but one thing I really like about Scoop It is the fact that I can embed, people can embed posts that they curate from Scoopit directly on their websites. Um, so when we talk about curation creation, and creation, what for you is important? Just, should people just curate on their blogs or should they create content? And yeah, what's so the percentage for each? Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, to me, it's a, it's a continuum. And, and by the way, you know, um, you know, as we, as we, started with curation for us it was a first step and you know we, we've now um you know recently like well actually a year and a half ago now we, we've launched scoop it content director which you know helps with the full content marketing cycle so it, it's more a b2b product and it's for marketers of you know s small marketing teams and it helps with both original and curated content and to me it's a continuum the goal here is to help you publish content curation is usually uh, a lot simpler than creation and it's also it's also helping so it's helping going faster not you know not to the point where it's just a one-click process and, and and you've highlighted that and and we've talked about that it's you know to me it's a few minutes but you still have to invest that but it's faster but it's also you know helping you understand your space a lot better you know when when we got started i was in a marketer you know, I'm an engineer by training. My first company was in the mobile space. Um, totally different. I mean, it was still content. It was mobile music. So you could say it's content. But I wasn't doing content marketing six years ago. But doing some curation work on content marketing made me understand everything that happened in that space. Helped me build expertise, knowledge. And, you know, I think it's a great way also to think about how you can understand what the industry is saying. You're, we're not creating content in a vacuum. So that debate about creation versus curation, you know, it's a continuum and it's a mix. The reality is I always encourage people to create as much as they can, as long as it's good. The problem is when you're getting started on a new topic, 
you can't claim to have the expertise of somebody who's been doing that for five years. So curation is probably going to be your best shot at providing that quality level. And when you have expertise, but you have limited resources and time, maybe you can do one good blog post every week. But maybe you know you can go to five by com completing, you know, complementing the, uh, the the creation work by curation. My my standard, my gold standard is to make sure that whatever I publish, you know, I can be proud of it. You know, this is this is something that yeah. if somebody holds that post against me, like you know, two years down the road, and say, hey, you know, you guys published this. I can say yes, there was a good reason I published that. So I want to maintain my quality level. In order for me to do that, I can't be doing 100% creation. I'm not that good, and I, I think you know, nobody really is. Um, so you know, I, I I do this mix of creation and curation, um, mm -hmm. and to me, they're they're part of the same continuum. And you can see some of my curated posts, you know, might have just one paragraph. Some of them I get inspired, and in just 15 minutes, I'll, I'll publish, you know you know, 500 words and it can be longer than some of my blog posts. So, you know, I think the two are, are really important. And I think the creation process uh, has always fed, you know, it's a human, it's in the, you know, the human creation process has never been creation in a vacuum. If you look at the artists, if you look at, you know, uh, book writers, authors, they've always referenced, you know, past work. So, uh, you know, creation in a vacuum, creation in the absolute sense doesn't exist. Um, it's always a continuum. Feedback? No, he froze. But uh, so content curation, content curation has always existed. We know that. We know that. We always curate to friends. We curate to people. When we didn't used to call it that way, but content curation for the last maybe three, four years uh, has become a sort of a buzzword, right? So, why do you think now content curation has it at the top of the pile. Why suddenly? Yeah, so you're right. And, you know, the way I describe uh, curation is what, you know, we were doing when we, and, and that's going to date me, I'm sorry, but <laughs> this is what we were doing as teenagers when we listened to music. We made uh, um, tapes of our favorite m music. And, you know, the best thing you could do, like if you wanted to, um, uh, to, to, um, to meet a girl and you wanted to do it, you know, hey, I made that tape for you with my favorite music. So you were curating music back in the days and I was in the 80s. So uh, sorry if for the millennials or have no idea what I'm talking about. But uh, today it would probably be a Spotify playlist or something. But anyway, so it's, it's always been existing. You're right. Uh, I think what's new is that um, it's information overload. With, with the modern web, we have, you know, infinite capacity to publish anywhere it's, it, you know, becomes, you know, click on a mobile phone and it's super easy to do. So I think curation today is both an opportunity and a need. We need curation to make better sense of all the content we have out there. And curation is an opportunity. That's the opportunity we describe to publish and, you know, to kind of ramp up your, your publishing efforts. And so because it's both a need and an opportunity, it resonates really well. And you're you're a you know a shining star example of this. You, you've you've been you've been building a, a fantastic audience in Scoop It, and we've seen people get you know millions of um, of, of you know uh, viewers on their Scoop It pages because it serves a need. As readers, as content consumers, we want to you know make sense. We can't read everything, so we want people who help us make sense of a given topic, and those are curators. Um, and to give you some figures and to put that in perspective, um, you know, we're super proud of having, you know, we're getting near 3 million users uh, on the Scoopit platform. And that's great. That's a great number. But the number we're the proudest of is that those people collectively attracted close to 300 million visitors on their Scoopit pages. Uh, so, so that's really the, the size of audience that they're, they're able to, um, to create, of course, collectively. Some of them are super successful and some of them give up. You know, it's, our platform helps. It doesn't make it magic, but it's really, you know, one of the best chances you have of building an, an audience right now if you have limited time and resources. So, so that's the number I'm, I'm proud of. It, it helps build the, this audience and that to me is fantastic. Well, 300 million is an amazing audience to have. Uh, and the thing is that anybody who's on Scoop, it can reach out to that audience. They're actually on the site. 
yeah 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 so you can make you can make use of the audience that other people are yeah so you know that's that's kind of our model um and you know we we help you create an audience on scoop it uh, and that's our free version and then you can uh, integrate that in your website so of course if you're um, if you own a business or if you have a, a company if you're a marketer um, you don't want to just have this this audience on, on scoop it um, and actually I'm the first one to say it's dangerous to depend on somebody else's uh, to, to to build your audience you don't want to and you know we don't want to depend on Facebook or Twitter um, and you know this there has been a, an interesting debate of whether you need to build your your audience on rented lands so you know for us it's clear you know you you our free version is you build that on stupid pages if you want to bring that onto your website on your WordPress, Hotspot, Drupal. Um, if you want to create content sites, uh, you can do that and, and build that on your own domain, which will help your SEO, not the stupid SEO. Right. Um, and you know that's that's what our you know premium plans and our uh, enterprise version, so uh, stupid content director um, enable you to do among other things. Yeah, but you actually when you actually uh, have your own topic on Scoop, but you're building up a knowledge base, aren't you? A permanent knowledge base that not only can you refer to yourself, but you can refer other people to. So, for argument's sake, I run a, a topic called blogging effectively, which is simply a collection uh, and editing. Uh, uh, Rose again. Freezing again, Stephen. People who have <laughs> written about best <laughs> blogging. Posts. Sorry, who've written about best blogging yeah. practices? So, so uh, I think you are describing the resource. fact that those pages become resources. Um, and you know, I remember. Um, I think it was. Uh, mm. I think it was uh, at the very beginning, right after we launched. Um, we noticed our first ping back from Wikipedia, um, and that first was fantastic. There was, uh, you know, somebody who you know made a, a an edit on Wikipedia. Uh, you know. And Wikipedia, you have all those references, and you usually use as references, you know, media sites, uh, established uh, sites, and you know, somebody's scripted page became the reference for a Wikipedia article. So I remember that, uh, and that's kind of a, uh, you know, showing what, what you described is that those pages become resources. They become, um, you know, a, a great collection uh, of of um, content on a given topic. But not just a collection, and and you're right. It's not just aggregating uh, links that matter. It's also enriched by the curator's own perspective. So you know, people who have expertise to tell you, "Hey, this article is actually good, but I disagree with part three. Or if you want to elaborate on this topic, you should also read that. Uh, so, so that to me is it's what's really um, interesting for uh, for visitors. There is they they get great content with a perspective. Let me froze again, but okay. Uh, an important point you made about is about perspective and sharing your point of view and and so on and so forth. And that's something that Scoop It allows people to do because you have a, a a comment section that allows to build conversation and so on and so forth. But uh, um, in terms of of being a content curator, what according to you are the most important traits of a very good content curator? Yes, so so that's interesting. Um, I think there there are some uh, you know common uh, common things, um, and and then there's a there's a debate we we always have about is it about uh, volume versus quality and you know how how does it play out and, and we study that I think you know to me the the common things are you know it's it starts with great content um, you know it, it's uh, like you said it's not uh, putting out any kind of content that doesn't have you know great uh, great value for your audience. It's about making a selection. Um, you know, good curators are selective uh, in, in in what they publish. They don't, uh, and we help them come out with great suggestions. But you know, our algorithm our algorithm is just as good as the technology behind it. It's great. We're super proud of it. But we'll we'll never uh, pretend that you know it does your job. So you still apply some selection there. Um, then I think you know. Personalizing the content, the content to your audience is key. Um, great curators edit the title, give it a different spin. Uh, maybe it'll change a picture to have something that is more, um, you know, in tune with with their audience. So, 
you know, um, if your topic is, you know, big data for a specific, uh, you know, how can SMBs leverage big data, for instance, you could take an, an article on, SM, on, on, on big data and, and say, okay, what's in it for SMBs? So, you know, playing that kind of contextualization is, is really key. And then, you know, I think, so there, there are some common best practices and, you know, there's lots of, um, you know, best practices on our blog at blog.scoopit or in our resource center. And then there's been this question, uh, which is, do you create an audience faster by publishing more or publishing better? And we found in it, we did a, some interesting analysis on this. Um, so quantity is easy to measure and we have tons of data on this. Uh, quality is of course more subjective, but we've done something at Scoopit, which we, we, we introduced what we call the Scoopit score. And of course it's, a, you know, we try to rationalize quality, it's always hard, but we try to look at, you know, data like, you know, the, the engagement people have with content, the number of things which are, you know, um, the type of things you can do with uh, Scoopit content, how many times it gets reshared and things like that. And so we come up with, you know, some ranking for quality, which, you know, we could debate of whether it's, it's the best. We're not saying it's perfect, but it's some ranking. What we found is that the top 10, the top percentile of, uh, of users in terms of um, uh, quantity, we're doing an average 4X than the median in terms of traffic building. And it was pretty much the same for the top 10% in quality. Now, the interesting part is that those who were both in the top 10 for quality and for quantity were doing uh, 10 to 12 X better. So, you know, it's, it's about combining both. Right. Now, you have plans for the future with regards to uh, content curation and the technology behind it in helping Being content marketers Growth become more team. successful. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have plans to to uh, help people succeed, uh, and you're bringing out. Uh, some articles and reviews. I, I think he's referring to uh, the role of technology in helping content marketing success. Okay. And I, I, know, I know you're about to release some um, pieces, some content to help people with that. Yes. And so the background for this, um, so, so thanks for the question. The, the background for this, and that's really a, a topic that is fascinating to me because I think we're, we're about to see a lot of changes uh, in, in, um, in content marketing and in content in general. I think we're, we're at the point where technology is going to be a game changer again. Uh, and the background for this is, you know, remember we started because we felt that um, the big problem people were going to have is how do I become a publisher? And so we thought, okay, step mm -hmm. one, what are they missing? Content. Well, curation helps them ramp up, become more knowledgeable, become more confident about creating content and also gives them content when they don't have any. But the sad news about, you know, this is that publishing content is not enough. And that's what we're seeing right now. And that's been the story around content marketing for the last two years. You know, there was a great post by Mark Schiffer, um, kind of a wake up call on, you know, he introduced that content of content shock. So now that everybody's doing content marketing, which isn't true, a lot of people are still not doing it, but more and more people are doing content marketing. He said, well, you, we're going to have diminishing return. It's going to be hard to be um, you know, really, uh, it's going to be more competitive. Uh, I think some of that is true. Some of that is debatable. There's a whole debate around it. But the truth is that what we've seen observing people um, use our platform is that, you know, publishing a lot of content is not enough. Uh, that's publishing consistently, you know, and we could debate about the, the right volume, but publishing consistently is mandatory. It's, an, it's you know, mandatory, but it's not sufficient. And what we've seen is that there are other hurdles in the content marketing game, which are come, how do you distribute your content? How do you analyze content performance for you know, people who are uh, business owners or B2B marketers? It's a lot about the ROI and getting people to become leads and, and all of that. And so that's what uh, drove us to build uh, Scoopit Content Director as a way to cover the full content marketing cycle and by the way, not, not just for curation anymore, but also for curation and original content. Um, so we help you plan that content. Uh, we help you produce that content, either original or curated. 
we help you distribute it over social media channels, email, or you know through content sites. And we help you analyze content performance so you can get better and you can also amplify the content that is successful. Now, if you if we look at what we've been doing that for the last two years, and it's really doing really well. We have some you know clients who tell us that you know in just seven weeks they've multiplied their traffic by four on their blog. So that's really good. And we usually help them because we help them work faster and in a more structured manner. But what we realized is that there were a lot of opportunities that they were not leveraging. Because content marketing has become very sophisticated. You know, you need to publish content several times. You need to optimize your distribution. You need to analyze content performance. You know, there's a ton of best practices on content marketing. There's lots of tools and we're overwhelmed. So what we're launching is a kind of, uh, think of it, and, and that's kind of the direction we're going into, almost like artificial intelligence for content marketing. Think of it as a companion, like a, like okay. a droid, that analyzes what you're doing to really, you know, find out opportunities, tell you things like, hey, uh, this blog post is actually performing really well, but, you know, it's evergreen content and you haven't shared it in three months, you could share it again to generate more leads and traffic. Or, you know, you've been using that keyword, well, that's great, but people are also looking for that keyword or that keyword, and you should enrich your content with those keywords. So lots of things like this, that's what kind of we're, what we're working on. Because you know, producing enough content is just the first hurdle. Distributing it well and having it convert and understanding how the performance works is really, really important. That's why we talk about the content marketing cycle, and, and that's what drives our, our roadmap and our development. Exactly yes, time. absolutely. Uh, Sandrine, have you more questions? Or oh. If anyone watching has questions, then uh, please type them bottom right hand corner of the screen and we'll read them out and Gail can, uh, can answer them. Uh, we'll record for another five minutes or so, if that's okay with you, sir. And uh, then we'll go off camera and perhaps people will come on camera. There is a question people. actually at the top of the chat, but I cannot scroll up. It goes up every single time. Oh, right. uh, okay. Durham Skywriter, I am sorry, I don't know her name. Uh, she asked, as a publisher of an online community paper for my city, would it be a good idea for me to use Scoop It to identify or unearth stories and topics for the development of stories? Uh, you know, I would say yes. Um, I think, you know, you should look at it from the point of view of your audience. Um, and most of the time, your audience is um, looking for value in your content. This could be educational, um, inform in informative, or entertaining. Um, so if you're writing a community pa paper for your city, I imagine that uh, they're looking for a mix maybe of information, um, entertainment. Now, do you provide all of it? Or would they be um, you know, seeing more value if they had a mix of your own stories and you know, stories for somebody else that you could you know, comment or, or present? Um, if that's the case, then you have a clear case for curation. Uh, the other the other way curation can help is you can actually highlight members of your community which are actively publishing. Um, there's a great example we have with a, a company, a, a, a fast growing startup in the Bay Area here uh, called Docker. Um, they're a technology company that using an op open source technology, breakthrough technology, and they have a lot of developers doing fantastic things with their technology, and they're blogging about it. So they use Qubit to curate those stories and you know present them on their blogs, which not only you know enriches their own content, but kind of um, you know br brings some value and, and you know it's a nice way to, to bring uh, the value back to their community, so, you know promoting their own content. So when you curate content, something interesting happens. We've talked about how it brings value to your audience, but it also brings value to the original content creator. You're you're bringing them traffic. You're saying to the world, to your audience, hey, this is great content. You should read it and you bring them traffic. So there's a lot of win-win uh, things that are going on is, you know, you build relationship. And, you know, we've talked a lot about how you build community, how you build relationship, how you do influencer marketing. Um, and, you know, my take is that if you wanna build a relationship with people who can be influential within a community, within a market, curating their content and, you know, giving them value before 
you ask them anything, uh, that's a great way to, to start building a relationship and, you know, enter their radar. Uh, so, you know, long story short, I would say, yeah, I think, I think it would make a lot of sense. All right. Patricia's asked a, a further question or made a comment. Patricia, would you like to come on here and ask? Uh, if you just click the call in button. Um, I'm sorry, can you say again, Stephen? Uh, right. Patricia is coming on air to ask the Good. question. Okay. Uh, Let's see. We've, we've, Patricia and I have chatted on many occasions over recent months on different blabs and uh, it's always good when somebody can uh, pop in and ask a question. It's a bit, you know, one of the beauties of, of live video, we hope. Well, uh, Guillaume, would you say that content curators are the influencers of the future? So, I'm not sure I would make that statement. I, th I think curators have definitely uh, strong influence and, and they have the ability to uh, really, um, you know, build up um, their influence. I think there are lots of ways to build influence. Um, and, and um, you know, I, I wouldn't say they are the only type of influencers, but yeah, it's absolutely a way to show some influence um, because you're actually, you know, handpicking that content and presenting it uh, to an audience. And so if you think about, um, you know, think about, you know, going back to music, I'm sorry, but this is, you know, kind of uh, <laughs> something that also defines me and my, my first startup is in music and, uh, and, but so if you think of uh, radio DJs, they're curators and they've been influential in um, deter you know, determining you know, what music we listen to, what music got you know, popular. We all know the stories of DJs launched a new song, a, a new uh, act, and you know, they made uh, those people famous. So yes, curators have influence. I don't think that's the only kind of influence, but certainly it is. Welcome. Thank Welcome, you. Patricia. How are you today? Hello. Uh, it's good to see you again. Well, oh, I think yes. we're all good. How are you? Um, I'm right. doing just fine. Um, thank you for answering my question. Um, I guess my use of uh, Scoop It would, would be a little different, I suppose. It would be using, I guess, search words or keywords to find stories to write about as opposed to using the actual work of other writers. That's what I was asking about, if that would be ethical and useful. Yeah, absolutely. So I was talking about this continuum and, and, and thanks for the question because it allows me to clarify something. Um, if you look at what, how curation works, um, the basic form of curation is you find a story, you tweet it. And like I said, you, know, you miss the opportunity to publish that on your website. And so mm -hmm. I talked about the idea of doing a curated post. A curated post, is a short quote from the original article, a link back to the original article, and then you know one, two, three paragraphs of your own that will will enrich uh, this article. Hmm. But the next way to use the platform, and so our platform integrates that uh, and makes that you know there's a template, you're guided, and a lot of people have found that useful. But you're absolutely right. Some people use our platform to even go a step further and to ideate from that content. So. They type in the keywords they want, they read the stories uh, they like, they can rank that by popularity, um, and they can find the content they like. Um, they, 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 they use that content for inspiration. Or they find that content to understand, okay, what else are people um, you know, reading on that same topic? And so if somebody's written on that topic from that angle, maybe I should come out with a different angle to have produce something different. Uh, okay. So because the way I I would use it would kind of render your um, your tool invisible, and I didn't know if that would be ethical or not. So oh yeah no so absolutely uh, you know like I said we we have um, our free version makes our tool visible, and then mm -hmm. we have a lot of uh, different uh, paid options you know starting from twelve ninety nine a month uh, okay. that are designed for that particular uh, purpose, and our model is simple you know we we don't charge anything for the free version. The catch, and it's you know we make that very. It's it's not a catch. It's there. It's 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 yeah. clear, but the, um, it's that you publish on a scooped page, so it's visible to your audience. And mm -hmm. you know, then, if you want this to be invisible, uh, we have a lot of different premium options. 
Okay, it's an in, it's a very interesting concept. I actually tried uh, curating with another website. I think it's called Paper Lee or Paper uh -huh. Lie, and I wasn't satisfied. I was getting stories like today. I saw a story about a Brooklyn rapper who was killed in prison in oh. in in New York. It has nothing to do with Durham, okay. my city, and. Uh, I was finding stories that have nothing to do with my area at all. So I thought I would try Scoop It. And, yeah. And I mean, I, I don't want to say uh, anything on competitors. And, oh, yeah. Well, but, uh, probably should have well, it. But Paperly is a very different tool. It doesn't work exactly in the same way. So that's why you didn't get the same results. That's okay. basically what it is. Okay. I'll definitely try it out. And it's really cute that uh, my first newspaper in Chicago, my hometown, was called The Scoop. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what we like in the name. There's a there's a uh, there's a there's a content reference that um, you know has been has been there for a long time. So, but thank you. I also wanted to point out a, a, a typo, which I guess you can you can look at later. Yeah, thanks for that. I saw that on the. I'll uh, look at that. I'm not sure what that happened here, but thanks for that. Before joining the media, I was a uh, proofreader. I can't I can't help it. <laughs> So no, yeah, that's, that's, that's important. Absolutely right. So I'll hop off because somebody else might want to come in. And so thank you for this wonderful tool. I, okay. I signed up and I, I will be checking it out. All right. And don't hesitate to ask me any questions if we can. Oh. Okay, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Okay. Oh, Stephen froze again. But I guess, oh, he is back. Okay, right. I'm back. I'm back. Uh, right. Okay, that's been a brilliant uh, Q and A. I, Sandrine, I've got to say a oh. big thank you to you Thanks. first of all for, for <laughs> being in contact with Gon. And uh, if you'd like to thank Gon for well, being Guillaume, with us, and, merci and beaucoup. Thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you. Such a fantastic chat, um, and that makes me love Scoop it even more than I. <laughs> Love Scoopid before just to talk to you. Very interesting. Uh, Stephen and I feel very privileged to have had you today because we know you're very busy. Um, so thank you very very much for being with us today. Well, thank you. It was really a pleasure to be uh, to be here. And uh, so, Sandrine, keep me posted to uh, on on your uh, trip to Toulouse, and we'll make sure you connect with the, the team. You're going to be uh, there in the fall. For sure. For sure. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, feel free to tweet me any question. Um, love to uh, chat on Twitter. I'm at G-D-E-C-U-G-I-S. And, you know, happy to help in any way. Thank you. Brilliant. Uh, thank you, everyone, who's been watching us. Uh, you'll be able to catch the replay if you came in. Yes, the replay Late. will be, the replay available, will be available, available once the video is processed on Blab. When the show... When the show is finished, I'm going to pause the recording now. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.